So we've been talking a lot about fish food. Um, one of the things that we've been asked is, why do so many pond foods have colour enhancers? Is this to make the food more brightly coloured to attract the fish, or is there something else to it? It's a, that's a good question. There's a, a big difference between what we would call colourants in the fish food, which are there to colour the pellet and colour enhancers. So we would want in some fish foods then to be putting a, a colour into the pellet because it just makes the food more attractive looking to the fish. Um, you know, some research has shown if, if the fish, if, if the if, you know, the food particle has got a red colour to it and it's sort of moving a bit, then that's highly attractive to the fish. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons our Tetra Prima is so successful because the crumb as it sort of comes down through the water in the aquarium, um, it, it's sort of dancing around down in the water as it goes and it's red coloured. And that's just behaviourally irresistible for an awful lot of midwater swimming fish. So that's colourants. But what we're really talking about here is colour enhancers. And that's a very different thing. This is about getting the raw ingredients into the pigment cells in the fish's skin. What we can see on this image here then is the colour pigment holding cells of a fish. Not a pond fish, but a marine fish, though the principle is exactly the same. So these little sort of black, red and yellow splodges are the chromatophores, which literally means the, you know, the, the colour bodies, if you like. So the, the, the red ones are called erythrophores, the black ones are melanophores, the yellow ones are xanthophores, and um, fish will also have iridophores, which are pigment containing cells. And if we think of all the vast colour spectrums of all fishes, that's, that's the, the palette that fish have got to work with. For example, there is no blue colour pigment. We think of the blue on the side of a neon tetra or something. That's coming largely from um, reflecting back of light from meridiophores. Melanophores and the xanthophores can generally get their pigments. Those pigments can be made from other ingredients, um, you know, other ingredients in the food. They're fairly easy for the fish to make itself. The tricky part is for the, the red pigment cells, the erythrophores, because they need to express a type of pigments um, called carotenoids. And the fish cannot make those carotenoids itself. It needs to get those carotenoids in the diet. Now, in the wild, you can find those carotenoids, especially in crustaceans, for example. If you think when one gets a lobster and cooks a lobster, it goes bright red from that sort of blacky, purpley colour it looks when it's alive, it's cooked, and it goes then bright red. That's because the carotenoid pigments in the lobster have been, you know, they've changed their form. Uh, to, you know, to go, you know, they, they, they've become expressed in this red colour through the process of heating. That's sort of what the fish is doing. We can give them the carotenoids in a, in a sort of a, a, a raw form in the diet, and then they can get those carotenoids into their bloodstream and the erythrophores can then lift those carotenoids out of the, the bloodstream and start to express them, you know, convert them to the red colour and express them in those, those erythrophore cells themselves. So with especially those red colours, it's about supplying the raw ingredients um, to the to these, these colour pigments. These colour pigments then are then, you know, the, 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 the colour cells are then found within the skin of the fish in the scales. What you can see here on these, these lines going across here, these are the annular rings on the scale of the fish. Um, you can see them here. So these, these chromatophores lie in the scales. Um, and the, because they're a living cell, they can change the way they um, express the pigment. If the pigment all gets concentrated into the middle of the cell, then it's going to appear much more vivid um, on, the, on the body of the fish. If the pigment is distributed much more evenly throughout the cell, then that colour is not so, so, so vividly expressed. What's going on with these, these slides here then, this is, these, these images A to F here is just showing us how the colour, this, this vivid colour pigment of the dotty back develops as it goes um, from, from larvae into juvenile. And it's just, you know, the, the, the density of the chromatophores and how they express the pigment throughout the cell is what governs the gross effect of we see, of the, the overall pigmentation of the fish. So, you know, fishes are, are, are very able to change their pigmentation throughout day and night. We, you know, we've got day night pigments of fishes. Goldfish are, are well known for showing um, melanophore migration um, when they, that, that, you know, after they've had a skin infection or some irritation to their skin, 
they will then concentrate the melanin pigment um, in the center of these, these um, melanocytes, which will then make the fish look as if it's got these sort of black splodges um, all over its pigment, which can look quite marked on a goldfish. Um, if it is, if that is, no, that's what one's seeing, then that's just the goldfish telling you it's recovering from some sort of skin infection. So we quite often see it following, um, you know, white spot infection or, you know, uh, some other opportunistic skin ectoparasite. If we're wanting our koi carp or our goldfish to be a really nice vivid red colour, then we've got to be feeding them the pigments that they need, which is where colour enhancing foods come in, because those colour enhancers, colour enhancing diets are, could have got synthetic um, carotenoids in there, or there could be natural sources of carotenoids, such as coming from gamma shrimp, um, which is going to be a good source of carotenoid, or from things like marigold meal. There's carotenoids in lots of plants as well. So it's both natural and artificial sources. But if you want your fish to be coloured, and you want this, you want to really colour up, then we've got to give them the raw ingredients to to make that colour in the first place. <laughs>